Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Heather Lewis and today is going to be part two of this dresser set makeover. In last week's video, we did go ahead and do the two nightstands. So in today's video, I am going to be doing this big dresser. Because we are combining both of these videos and both of these pieces from each video and turning it into one matching dresser set, this video is going to be pretty similar to the last. And for that reason, I thought it would also be fun to do a Q&A. For that q and I did go ahead and I asked my Instagram followers to ask me questions either about me or just furniture flipping in general, and I got a ton of great questions, so we're going to answer those throughout the video. First, let's talk a little bit about the dresser. It is a huge oak dresser, and along with it being huge, it's also very heavy. I would say this dresser is in better condition than the nightstands, which is why I decided to follow through with this set. It's got nine drawers total, and the top middle rectangle part is only a veneer. I got this piece at the same time that I got the nightstands for $24, making this entire set cost me $44 up front. The first thing that needs to happen in this dresser makeover is taking off the hardware, so let's get into it. Right off the bat, let's start off with a question. Oh, I think that this is a good question to start off with, and that question is, when and why did you start furniture flipping? So, I started getting into furniture flipping when I moved into the Stillwater house, which was almost two years ago now. And I kind of started furniture flipping almost kind of by accident. When I first moved into the Stillwater house, I was kind of at the point where this is my first place, I barely have any furniture, and I'm just gonna take anything that anyone will give me. So I did that for quite a while, and once I actually moved in and started like getting everything situated, I noticed that I just had way too much stuff for my space. Although I got most of this stuff for free, I was like, this stuff is worth more than just free. So what I did is I resold the stuff that I didn't need back onto Facebook Marketplace and I actually made some cash from it. And it really got me thinking about like how I could kind of do this more often and just make like a side business out of it because things that I was getting for free, I was selling for more money and get putting like money in my pocket. And from there, kind of evolved into furniture flipping. I found the niche on YouTube and I kind of learned everything about furniture flipping, not only in the aspect of like just taking something and just reselling it right away, but also taking something, trying to make it better like I do with my furniture flips and then selling it for a higher profit. And so that's how I got into it. And this was only supposed to be like a part-time job until I found a real job or a full-time job, but it ended up being so good, especially in Stillwater, that I never ended up getting a job. So that's how it started and we're still here now. Starting to furniture flip was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made because it opened up so many opportunities for me, including starting this YouTube channel. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the hardware. If you've seen part one where I made over the nightstands, then you'll already know what hardware I plan on using. But if you haven't seen that video, for one, I'd go check it out. And for two, the existing hardware holes do not match up. For this reason, I had Avery pre-drill the holes for me, so when it came time to put the hardware on myself, it would be super quick and easy. Okay, so next question is, do you see yourself opening a store in the future for your furniture? And the answer to that is no. I think at most I would maybe put my furniture in someone else's store, one of those like thrift shops or like consignment store where I'm kind of like a vendor and like I get paid commission or stuff like that. I could maybe see myself doing that, but as far as starting my own store, I have no aspirations to doing that. I want to be transparent with you guys in the aspect that furniture flipping is not my end goal. If you were to put my future on a timeline within the next five years, I'd like to start transferring over into house flipping. Flipping. I really do love furniture flipping. It definitely can make you really good money, but real estate is where my heart is at. So although I love furniture flipping, I'm hoping that this is just a gateway into house flipping. And I know that furniture flipping and house flipping are on a whole different playing field, but I will not be furniture flipping forever. And for that reason, I would not open a store for it. 
With that being said, the next thing I'm moving into is filling in the old hardware holes. Because I have the new holes drilled, I won't be needing the old ones and I don't want them to show on the piece. I am using my favorite dry deck spackling to get all of these holes filled in. As we're doing this, let's go ahead and answer another question. This is question number three, I believe. Uh, where is the best place to find furniture to flip? And since I have moved, this question has actually changed. Um, if I were still living in Stillwater, I would totally say that the best place to find furniture to flip is Facebook Marketplace. I know in Stillwater, I was closer to the cities and I could just find dresser after dresser after dresser or nightstand or even side tables, coffee tables, just anything on Facebook Marketplace for actually pretty decent prices because people just really wanted to get rid of their stuff there. Um, but now that I have moved here more into the country, I would 100% say the Salvation Army or Goodwill or there isn't a Goodwill, there isn't a Goodwill near me, but I'm sure it would be be the same as the Salvation Army and I think that's just because most people kind of hold on to what they got here in the country whereas like people more in the cities are maybe more into the trends and you know they cycle through their furniture a lot more but here people just kind of stick with what they got and so here I would say the Salvation Army and closer to the cities, I would say Facebook Marketplace. So now at this point, the wood filler is currently drying and I did get a question that is related to wood filler. So I am gonna go ahead and answer that. I've been asked this question many times before and I've even answered it before, but I'm gonna go ahead and answer it again for those of you who may have not heard. But the question is, why do you use spackling over wood filler? Now there is a couple reasons, but I will say that the main reason is just preference. Um, but in my experience, I've noticed uh, spackling to not dry out as fast as wood filler does. When I first started flipping furniture, I solely just used wood filler. And I noticed that I was always buying new wood filler even before it was gone just because it had dried out. And from what I remember, I always had the lid on it and somehow it would just still dry out. And when I started using the dry deck spackling, it really didn't dry out like that. And I'm able to use the entire container before I have to go get a new one. So that is one reason. But then the other reason is I mentioned this so often, but the convenience of knowing when it's dry, because especially with the dry decks, it goes on pink and then you wait for it to dry and it dries white. Like this stuff right here is already almost white. I don't do a lot of staining projects though. And I do know that if you need to use a wood filler and you are staining, I would definitely go with like the actual wood filler rather than spackling because I don't think spackling can be stainable maybe there is a stainable type of spackling but this dry deck definitely isn't now that i've answered that i'm gonna let this dry up for a little bit longer and then we'll get into sanding the wood filler is all white which means that it is dry so it is time to sand i am gonna answer another question as i get started into sanding and this question is when do i use a high grit and when do i use a low grit what grit is good for scuffed sanding so when determining the grits of sandpaper it was kind of confusing for me at first because it was very backwards and the lower the grit is actually the grittier that it is so it's going to be a stronger grit it's going to rip through the surface more whereas a higher grit is actually going to scuff it up less because it's just a little bit finer and less gritty I guess you could say so it is a little bit backwards and that's how I like to think about it. A higher grit is going to not scratch it up as much and a lower grit is going to just kind of rip through the surface. And a really low grit would be like about 50 to 80 and then like a really high grit would be like 300 I guess you could say. So I like to scuff sand around 220 so it's usually around 220 to 200. 220 to 300 and I like to just stay in that range. After sanding, I needed to clean the piece down as well as all the drawer fronts, so I mixed up a bucket of warm water and Dawn dish soap. This solution really picks everything up and after I cleaned the drawers, I pulled out all of the junk out that was left in the body of the dresser. All this stuff was stuck behind the drawers, so if you are ever getting rid of a piece of furniture that has drawers, this is your reminder to pull all the drawers out and grab everything. 
I really like using these microfiber cloths because they really help in picking everything up. I will make sure to leave a link to it in my description box down below as well as any product that you see in this video if you want to go ahead and check that out. Alright so at this point it's time that I start putting the primer on. I am using the Zinzer 123 primer and as I'm mixing this I'm going to answer another question that revolves around primer and that question is how much does the primer you typically use cost? And I searched it up and it costs about $33. Amazon may in fact be cheaper and I can leave a link to it down below. As for a stain blocking primer, um, Kills Primer can cost as much as $41, but it's also serving a bigger purpose. If I only need an adhesion primer, it's always the Zinzer 123. And if I need a stain blocking primer, it's always Kills. Now that I'm finishing up the primer, I wanted to mention that if you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying the type of content that you are watching, please go ahead and give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't yet as it really does help small channels like mine grow. A couple videos back, I did mention that I was trying to hit a goal of 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year and... We are already almost there, so I can't thank you guys enough. Thank you just absolutely so much. Making a career out of my YouTube channel is my dream, but I cannot do it without you guys. I am using the same paint as I did on the nightstands, which is this beautiful gray called Iron Ore from Sherwin-Williams. I do really like how this paint has held up. I mentioned in the last video that I'd be testing the quality and the durability of the nightstands without top coat on as there's already some in this paint and even while having to move it around, um, the finish is flawless so I've decided not to put an additional top coat on and I will make sure to include photos of them currently in the final reveal. I'm going to move into another question and that question is how many coats of paint do you need to put on? And the answer is it depends on each paint that you use. I always think that two coats of paint is the bare minimum, but then again on this project I did need three coats. So always check each piece over for full coverage. Now I'm going to answer one final question in this video and then this is going to wrap up the questions. And that is what is your favorite piece of furniture to flip? And mine is dressers. I do a lot of dressers. But a matching nightstand set is a close second because both of those have really great profits. After the first coat, I had to move the dresser into the garage because it was getting so much sunlight to the point where parts of the dresser were starting to bubble up. Now, I know this bubbling looks pretty scary, but it's actually a pretty easy fix. Just a little annoying. Um, but to fix it, you have to start back at sanding and then you have to clean up the dust and then you have to... Well, you don't have to, but you can prime if you choose to. I didn't, and then you can get back to painting. Just make sure it's really smooth before any paint does go on it. Obviously, when I was putting on my second coat, those affected areas were getting its first coat, so I did have to do a little bit more of painting, but it turned out just fine, so let's go ahead and get into the final reveal. Working nine to five. If you want more than to stay. 